to Waffle Talk, episode, uh, well, for Dice Camera Action, episode 132. This is the show where we talk about Dice Camera Action, which is a show on the D&D channel run by Chris Perkins. And on Tuesday, they had their latest episode. Um, and if you're in the chat and uh, you type anything in the chat, it will appear on the screen. So don't like, you know how some people can you make weird keys appear and make like doodles of a guy flipping a table using text oh. or yeah. other less wholesome things. Don't do any of those. Do not. <laughs> Please. Hello, Luca <laughs> Trupa, and hello, Vixen. Okay. Thank you for being in the chat. I super yeah. appreciate it. Um. So, uh, Shauna, can you uh, run down what happened on episode 132? Oh, yes. It's finally um, time for the um, auction of the um, the Stone of Galore being put up by Lady Roshnar. So the group prepares, puts on disguises, and goes to the auction, which is, in short, attended by every antagonist that they've ever had in Waterdeep. So the Castellanter is what remains of um, the Zentarum and the um, Andralaxel. She made a personal appearance. And during the... Um, right before the um, auction happened, right, right, right during the auction, right before it was about to be concluded, lights went, went down and all hell went loose. And thing, multiple spells were just like dropped on them. Damaging spells like fireball, some some radiant ones, and when the smoke cleared, Dieth ends up with the the stone. Jarlaxel makes an attempt to for him to give up the stone. Dieth says no, and that's where he ended it in that precarious moment. Mm -hmm. So I have, I have a huge pile of uh, it's a lot notes here. Yeah. Is there anything either of you want to? Discuss before I start running down this mother. I'm sure we'll get to it in the notes. Yeah. I was happy to see Zardoz Zord. Ah, uh, yes. Zardoz <laughs> Zord. Yes. Oh, yeah. Look at just uh, refresh. It's funny with Twitch. Sometimes it's like you have to refresh. And then when you mm -hmm. refresh, you get to watch an ad for the ad. football. The unvolume controlled ad that blasts into your ears. <laughs> you know, while you were talking, I suddenly had a dice camera action thought, but I, I've lost it already. It's already. Oh no! Like, it passed right through my brain, like. In I hate that. Do you ever get? Does anybody? I want to ask this. This has nothing to do with dice camera action. I'll make it real quick. When mm -hmm. you're hungry, do you ever get like air bubbles that go up your spine into your head? Do you ever get that? And they're so loud that what? other people what? can hear them. Do you ever get that? Anybody? I get no. I get the neck snap. But that's just because. Hmm. So I used, to, I used to that go up your spine into your head. <laughs> yeah, it, it'll it'll be like, you know. And I used to be at my friend's house and we'd be watching movies, and he'd get so freaked out when he would hear the bubbles going into up my my head. It was oh. it's really weird. So. Hopefully, that's, hopefully that's not like, like I'm gonna die or something. But yeah, hopefully not. Jeez. Not. I mean, All right. hasn't done anything yet, so. Okay, so yeah, that, I mean, that was the web MD portion of this. Don't show. look, never, never look up that. <laughs> no, never look it up. <laughs> I did Google it once. I did. <laughs> Just, I, did. <laughs> I don't remember what happened after that, but. <laughs> Uh, Luca, Luca wrote a blog post about the inner planes. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, the planes of dryness and moisture. <sighs> exactly, Saima. Up your throat. He's sort of like the back of your throat. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe. Anyway. Maybe. So I would like to start by, uh, you know, I'm a big Lightfall fan. Yes. Who is he? <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. So Lightfall's wow. got new stats, everybody. Yeah. If you go on uh, the Gamepedia, Dice Camera Action Wikipedia, on the Lightfall page, I put 
the old stats and I also put in the new stats so you can see the whole thing. So the new stats, it gives it. This is weird. It gives it gives Evelyn plus one to her AC, and plus yeah. two if she wields it two handed and isn't using a shield, which she never really does. So it's gonna be plus two. So this, <laughs> this is two. this is a this is a homebrew item, right? This is. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then Custom. um, when she deals radiant damage with it. She can heal up to six creatures for D10. That's a big thing for that's like that's big. the biggest thing I think. Cause it's like she, every time you hit, every time you you deal, you heal everybody. That's so that's so good. Isn't it? Does she have like that divine smite? Yeah, she divine smite every time she hits, basically, or no? Just well, divine smite. I think. Yeah, I think. I think paladins have to spend spell slots to mm -hmm. divine smite. I, so I just know that my character, but, um, I have a paladin, and he's 16th mm -hmm. level, and he does do radiant, radiant every single time. I think it's improved yeah. divine I, smite. So I mean, yeah. that means that there will come a time probably where Evelyn will heal people every single time, and she yeah. Hits, so like D10, D10, D10. Like, yeah. She yeah. She hits like she gets two or three attacks, two attacks. So she'll be healing people 2d10 every God. round. Yeah, if she gets, like, if there's a, something that lets her just do it, like, every, <laughs> with every, not spell slots. Mm -hmm. Gosh. A lot. Yeah. yeah. Holy cow. That, like, plus her auras, mm -hmm. like, no one's going to want to be away from her. No. <laughs> no. Dear it's Lord. Like, is there, was there a, there is no limit on, like, distance for, like, uh, you don't have to be 10 feet with that, with her thing now, it doesn't say. I don't know. But, um. The other thing with that, I was thinking though, that was that their encounters are so scattered that um, they probably won't get the benefit of it all that much because most of their they don't usually have your standard D and D combat where it's like they're all in a clump in a room mm -hmm. taking turns swinging. Usually, it's more chaotic and everybody's all over the place and yeah. doing nutty things. So I don't think that it's going to uh it probably won't come up that that much it'll come up yeah but, but i mean it that or they'll forget that it has that ability <laughs> yeah i was looking at it the um that... i don't think the chat will let them forget that no one. no probably no, not. No, no 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 but yeah that spell that ability to do radiant healing just combos really nicely with that the third thing which is she can cast sunbeam which oh, is just yeah. Like yeah, Sunbeam, yeah. That's like a that's a high level spell, right? It's a high it's a sixth uh, level. Six level. Mm. Yeah. God. It's like a wall of light. Saima says, I've wanted one of them to have Sunbeam so much, and Chris delivered. God. It does have an hour recharge in the sun for the healing. That's that's not That's not awful, honestly. That's not awful. Unless you're unless you're like in Underground, yeah. The main address or something like that, where there's not a lot of sunlight. Maybe. Well, if they're going into the dungeon of the Mad Mage, that might be a thing. Yeah. Yeah. That could be. Once, you might never do it again. Yeah. Oh, still. Um, yeah, with Divine Smite, improves Divine Smite, you get it on every attack, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Saima, the healing is also limited by the recharge rate, so it's not completely broken. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Is. Now, with, with this item, is. Is. Is Paulton bottom of like the magic item list again? Like, because DF has like a couple of cool like that. He has that dagger and he has gutter, but Paulton had one, but it got eaten. Strix has a yeah. has a staff of uh, the major staff power. Right? Yeah, right, and and her other staff. Yeah. Yeah. What does Paulton have? He had you know, he had the Kanaeth mandolin. Yeah, yeah. which is. Instruments of the Bards are super good. You know, I can actually yeah. look on the wiki. I he has it. a sun sword too, right? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, he has the yeah. sun sword. Yeah. And then he has the robe of the arch magi, which he can't wear. Which I can, can tell you all of his magic items. Ready? Go. He, he has eyes of charming. Go. He has well, he had the Kanaeth mandolin. He has the sun sword. Rip. He has a potion of greater healing. He has a cloak of billowing, and he has the robe of the arch magi. Yeah. Yeah, so not that many, honestly. Not that he many. He has some uh, goofy fun items. He's a disguise kit kit that comes with two costumes, a pterodactyl and Chris Perkins. Oh my god. <laughs> He's a dwarf sized bathrobe from Gauntel Grimm. 
Oh, God. It's uh, okay. a necklace with Evelyn's signet ring and a cog hanging from it. Mm-hmm. Um, does he still have that? Yes, I, so. I believe he does. He may or may not. Does he still have the pistol? I have to update this. Oh. Pistol that fires poison bullets taken off a slain drow gunslinger. I don't think he, he might does. not, because Simon might not. and uh, yeah. Squidly took it and then dropped it. Mm-hmm. Right? Well. Yeah. Vixen says, new toys for the Waffle Crew. New toys for Chris. Yep. Uh, hello, Phoenix. How you doing? Hey. Uh, DS still has gloves of thieving, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever they're called. Yeah, he does, I think. He does. Go back. See that cool dagger that just reappears in his hand. Mm-hmm. I love that dagger. DS has... Um... All right, DS has got good stuff. DS got gutter. He's got gloves of thievery. He's got a... Well, I don't think he has the ring of protection anymore. I think he Mm-mm. still has the stone of good luck, right? Yeah. He, he has moon splinter. Uh, he doesn't have the alchemy jug anymore. He gave that away. Oh, rip. Oh. Alchemy, rip, rip mayonnaise forever. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad. Uh, does Simon count as a magic item? No, not anymore. Not anymore, yep. <laughs> He's less of a magic item, more of like maybe... The Simon's maybe mellowing out a little bit. Right. Aren't children the most magical? Yeah. <laughs> although, although now he has like he has tile level hit points and not construct level hit points. So, I mean, even as a construct, Simon didn't have that many hit points. So. Yeah. You know, it's a child. Sima, doesn't Paulton still have the eyes of charming? Yes, I think so. Yes. Uh, the pistol got dropped from the roof and exploded. That's right. I mean, Death yeah, has the butt fire. stone. And Vixen says, I thought the ring and the necklace was the one from Sandra. I thought Paulton was already wearing Evelyn's ring. Am I wrong? I don't know. The I ring... think it's Evelyn's. Evelyn's, I think. All right. The notes that I have on the ring. Mm. Go back to Paulton. It said something. Uh, His notes. God. Well, I'm looking at the wiki. <laughs> ah. So I mean, this one. Uh, the, okay, the ring is Evelyn's signet ring. It bears the symbol of the Marthane family. So... Yeah. There you go. All I right. Should, I should definitely find clarify what the deal is with that. So yeah. Anyway, Lightfall has new powers. Lightfall is pretty awesome. But Lightfall's Lightfall's not a plus one weapon or anything. It just gives a bonus to AC. I mean, that's a weird. Well, it, it's like a mace of disruption, right? So it is a plus one. It's considered magical, I guess. Does it, but... did it keep all of its old powers? I'm... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because mm. uh, Anna asked, and Chris is like, "Yeah, that plus all these new ones." Yeah, oh. I mean, having having Evelyn have a one, even just a one tick of AC is a lot. <laughs> like, just Paladin's Paladin. just hard to kill anyway. Twenty four AC, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's something. Okay. So Phoenix says, if Grog was in this world, he'd rage over the loss of infinite mayonnaise. And Luca asks, is Grog the big Critical Role dude? So, mm-hmm. right now, Critical Role is doing this Kickstarter where they're going to have uh, a Critical Role cartoon. Mm-hmm. And they were going to just do one episode, but the goal was $750,000, and they blew through that six in the first In day. an hour. Now they're at, what, five or six million? Six million, at least. They're past six million. And so, I was thinking, like, maybe this will... Because, you know, D&D is owned by Hasbro. So maybe mm-hmm. they'll see that and maybe do a dice camera action like one episode just to just to see, you know? Maybe. Maybe once maybe, this maybe. critical role thing plays out and if it's a success, which it seems like it's gonna be. I mean, as long a... as they can make the cartoon on time or in a reasonable I mean it's a it's frame. a it's um it is it's a um pretty steady well known like um animation house, so I don't think that's gonna be I think Oh yeah. Pretty, yeah. Oh yeah. Titmouse has done some. Titmouse has done some amazing stuff, yeah. Yeah. So, because I feel like they would definitely want to do that. This group would want to do that. Maybe. I could see it. They could start right from the beginning. I know Critical Role has an issue with. They had this one player that they kind of kicked out early on, mm-hmm. so it's kind of weird. <laughs> they actually say in the fact that he's not going to be. In he's not going to be in there. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, do they write him out of the continuity, you know? And then it's kind of weird. It's like you're doing a cartoon. Uh, are you going to change what happened in the game 
to fit the format. You know? That's a good question. Yeah. That's always a good question. A five hour, but what's funny is a five hour session turned into a cartoon, you might actually, because you know, combat rounds take so long. Yeah, you condense it. You condense it. <laughs> or It'd be like, like two minutes of animation, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A fight, yeah, a couple round fight is like 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah. With dice camera action, if I could think of a session that I would want to see in cartoon form. I don't know. What would you, if you could pick one? What would it be? The last Barovia episode, second round, for season three. The last mm -hmm. Barovia episode. What happened on that one? I don't remember. That was everyone died except for Strix. Oh, geez, you want to see that? Holy cow! <laughs> that was a good episode. I mean, that was a that was a tense episode. I think. I think I would do the one where they actually went to Sigil on the live show. Yes. I can't. Yeah, that would be a good one. I can't think of one episode specifically, but like the Klaus fight would be pretty cool. Where they're in the ruins of uh, Omu. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. that would be good. Yeah. It's Bag of Nails with his arrow dragon slaying. Yeah. It's yeah. funny that they haven't done an Acquisitions Inc. animated show because they do those kind of cartoony intros. Because uh, I would love to yeah. see like God. the one where they, they flew the Triceratops uh, into the t-rex and the, mm -hmm. and the one with the the beer golems you know parachuting down yeah they, they there was a lot of really good ones now it's weird it's like could they i i they probably couldn't could you just take the audio from the game yeah oh, no. the audio i don't think is good enough quality i think there's still some even even like critical role or any of these things there's still a little scratchiness i think you need to have like yeah plus there might be professional in a booth recording mm -hmm. yeah still it's like it's like critical role so critical role is doing that i feel like the bigger critical role gets the bigger everything else gets so mm -hmm. they're kind of paving the way and then uh well you know it's kind of like okay so what does this mean for dice camera action you know <laughs> mm -hmm. i mean you know because hasbro is loaded right you know then that's yeah they they make cartoons they used to make cartoons to sell toys you know what i mean so it's like they're in they can make cartoons you know so um but can you sell toys sure. but the thing is though with cartoons can you sell toys off of those cartoons and that's what oh god yeah that's what killed the last couple like dc shows they couldn't sell toys and so there really wasn't a point to really? you know that, that's killed a lot of cartoons honestly yeah. like oh yeah we couldn't make toys off it when we didn't even try to make toys off it. It's like, okay, sure. But if it's a promo thing, I guess you could see like some some benefit to that. Yeah. The dice camera action. Those are cool toys. The Strix figure would be really cool. Owlbear. I think. The Owlbear. Strix, really do you, do you, does anybody remember like, there was an old He-Man toy. It was like a skunk dude and he just like yes. smelled bad. And that was like his, <laughs> that was like his like, <laughs> His like bonus, this thing just like smelled just terrible. Oh, uh, yeah, I used to like, smell him. Yeah, I remember, yeah. My little brother, oh, I yeah, I used to smell him. him. Yeah, I love smelling things. So, like, I used to have a Luke Skywalker figure that I, I was always smell his head because it smelled weird. His name is his name is Stinkor, the evil master of odors. <laughs> yep, <laughs> yeah, he smelled, he didn't smell that bad. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty funny. Oh, uh, let's see here, Phoenix. It's not. If he's not busy, Scrooge McDuck swimming and all that Kickstarter money. Yeah, they're rich. They're totally rich. It's although um for a cartoon though, that's not a lot. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Like like animation process is it's expensive for a couple episodes. So Lucas says they got more than a tenth of what the tabletop industry as a whole generates in a year. The tabletop industry is very tiny in comparison. Like I think it's getting bigger. It's it's bigger, but like the um, quantity and stuff for like animation is like mm. this for it to be like I think seven hundred fifty thousand is like bare minimum for like for it to even be like presentable. So six million, it's gonna be nice looking, but it's not gonna be like you. We're not at this current thing. We're not gonna get a complete. So we're gonna get maybe like three four hours, maybe max. From it. Well, they do have a, a stretch goal for like a whole uh, arc of mm -hmm. the show. The, yeah. The Bri Briarwoods. Yeah. Yeah. But that's only like a few episodes, though. That's not yeah, 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 the entire yeah. thing. It'd be like 
a couple specials, I guess, mm-hmm. basically. Phoenix says, I'm sure there are a lot of studio people paying attention now. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. This is a, one of the more po- successful Kickstarters like ever, yeah. right? This, I think, just surpassed the um, the Mystery Science Series 3000, which I think oh, was... Oh, yeah. The, they got the... a show on Netflix. They do. Mm-hmm. How cool would that be if like Critical Role ended up on Netflix once it was all mm-hmm. made? Oh, yeah. Geez. That'd be cool. Because I mean, once, once they have it made, you know... They can just shop it around to whoever mm-hmm. wants to air it. It'd be yeah. weird if they just stuck it on YouTube for free. That would be weird. Yeah. But then you monetize it, and you could probably make money in that way too, I guess. Right? Yeah. Hey, does any? I don't want to get too off topic. Does anybody pay for YouTube? Some people do. Yeah. yeah. YouTube, I Red, bring, whatever. I can't bring myself to do it. Whenever I see like now, it's like they have some movies where it's like free with ads. I'm just like, no way. You know, so I can never. Withstand this, I, I can never withstand this thirty that. seconds to a minute. No, never again. Sometimes I force myself to listen to Rush Limbaugh in my car, and I swear to God, it's like mm. eighteen minutes of commercials and five minutes of talking, and it's just like, how could anybody put up? That might be a blessing. I mean, I was just about to say that might be. It's <laughs> that might be optimal. And then sometimes it's like they'll just cut to like a news break where some local news guy will tell you some like things for a minute, and they go back to more commercials. It's just like, so when on YouTube when it's like free with ads, I'm like, eh, fuck <laughs> you, no way. Uh, Saima, <laughs> R.I.P. Tiberius. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, that I've was read. A... I, I was. I, I haven't. I haven't really seen anything with that guy, Orion Akaba. I think his name is. But yeah. From what I read, it was like problem player. Oh it God, yeah. Lot, it was a lot of things. I think there was a lot of things mixed up in there. Yeah, it was a complicated thing, as I understand it. Yeah. yeah. It's always fascinating to me when a problem player leaks out on a on a show because it was it was it's, it was such an issue for me in the game store. That it's like mm. really interesting to see how other people deal with it because it, it's like it's like hell, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Saima, I think they're starting the cartoon at a point where he had already left. <laughs> okay, that's a good way to start off with, you know. Um, let's see, Phoenix. The first two episodes are pre-stream. Oh, when Tiberius <laughs> was still there. Luca says seeing Sigil in animated form in general would be rad. Yes. Yeah. Totally, totally agree. God, cool. love Shemeshka it. animated. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would just love it if they. I mean, how could you? But to take like the Tony Dieterlizzi art style and somehow animate that, that would be so mm-hmm. cool. Oh, mm-hmm. that'd be rad. Yeah. Love yeah. To see that. Wow. Saima, uh, yeah, the bag of nails, cloud fight. That's what Dylan wanted to see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Phoenix anime of the undead battle in Chult at the Paladin camp. Then through the portal, mm-hmm. yeah. It'll be interesting. The art style. I, I if you saw the intro of the critical, it looks so good. Looks good. Like, hmm. And and they're it's so funny. They're all voice actors. It's just amazing. It, it just everything yeah. works. You know, it's so cool. Um, look at yeah, crosstalk. You're right. Is a bigger issue with mm-hmm. audio quality. Yeah, from just taking audio from the game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Simon. Oh, no. Hasbro's newest hit, Waffle Crew Body Pillows. <laughs> Hmm. I know some people who'd want to cuddle with Dia. Yeah. <laughs> you know some people who'd want to cuddle with Dia. Do you say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not saying I'm <laughs> going in my head, and I'm not saying them. So. <laughs> I really want to, but I'm not. So there yeah, I'm interesting. <laughs> So many things to say about the about body pillows. Uh, I don't know if the dice camera actually casts is super toy etic. Got to start wearing war duke helmets. Mm-hmm. I think as a figure, Strix would be the coolest looking one, and I think DF would look cool too. Especially you know if they gave him gutter as well, that'd be super cool. It's got like a little throwing action or whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the action. Evelyn would have lightfall and or tree bane. Evelyn would be even looks be pretty cool. I guess Paulton would have a mug. Paulton would have like the minifigure of like um, Simon. Simon. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Paulton, uh, a Simon, a Piddlewick two Simon figure would be really cool with the mm-hmm. dart shooting action. You know. That would God. Be cool. uh, yes. 
It's talking about Cool Strike's deep speech. Oh, yeah. Yes. All right. Let's, uh, ready? I got a big pile of bullet points here. Let's go. Let's go through this. Do it. So, one, so they were, we've talked before about how the crew doesn't plan too much, which makes, I think, for fun shows. Yeah. Um, but they did come up with the idea of, because they're going to an auction, you hold up a little sign with your number on it. Mm -hmm. They thought they could use prestidigitation to change people's numbers to kind of mm -hmm. mess with the whole thing. Kind of a neat idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would that work, though? I think minor illusion would probably work better for that. You know, the thing about when, when, when players want to use a spell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, as a DM, it's like people can see and hear you cast it. Yeah, the verbal somatic like thing right? is a little... And you know. then it's like, what's a fair way to roll for that? Like, what mm. skill is that? Is it arcana? Sleight of hand? Like, what is that? You yeah, know, I, I guess it's... struggle with that. Because it's like, you kind of want to let him give, try it. Yeah, because there's... um, It would be a lot easier if there weren't, like, um feats or, like, class effects that, like, specifically said, no one can hear you say this or whatever. Like, uh... One of the meta, meta magic things mm -hmm. for sorcerers is yeah. subtle magic yeah. where you don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's, that, that's where it gets sticky as a DM when it turns mm -hmm. out that there is a player option specifically tailored to that. Yeah. But then if, if you wasn't... let them do it without that option, then it's kind of like, then you're starting to mess with, you know what I mean? It gets weird. Yeah. You're kind of like, Ooh, I shouldn't have let them do that. It has to, I think. I think it would have to be difficult, like really difficult. I think, no matter what. I'm mean, just picturing like you're sitting at an auction, you're all in your rolling yeah. chairs, yeah, and you're just like, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like if you, if you're if you're like across the room or like hidden, it's probably a lot easier. But like if you're just like if you're in the auction, yeah, I you're surrounded. The way I, people, yeah, the way I picture it is like uh, Snape in the first Harry Potter movie mm -hmm. and uh, Quirrell, yeah. where like they're at the Quidditch match. Yes, you know? yes. Somebody's somebody's bewitching Harry's broom, and they see, oh, it's Snape, you know, yeah. and he's, he's whispering some words, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Snape. I'm I'm not gonna go off on a tangent. About Snape. <laughs> yeah, it's um, cause, yeah, it's a lot, but also the fact that it's not also the speaking; it's like, it's huh. the motions that you have to kind of do to to have the spell, because it's not like if you're in some place where you're supposed to be like keep a little profile going, like you know making hand like magical hand motions especially people who know that who know what you know spell casting is is kind of kind of um whichever they tough. everyone there probably would yeah hmm. um some people in the chat mentioned this so we might as well just jump right to it there's a mm -hmm. point late in the show where uh i guess the castle lanterns summoned a barbed devil yeah and when yeah. strix mm -hmm. went to engage the barbed devil suddenly a voice came out of her cracks appeared in the walls and the barb devil started to like get affected. I guess that was Asmodeus talking through her. Yeah. Threatening the barb devil. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, why? He has plans for Strix. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't want her to mess with. I get the feeling that this this um that this family change is less of a solution and less and more of like a band aid mm. for this thing because it seems like there's a lot there's something deeper happening with that mm -hmm. than like sh simply sh taking the tricks out of your name. I mean the tricks. Yeah, because it was Asmodeus who took Strix and. Mm -hmm. I guess severed her link to the Skizixes and made her mm -hmm. a bee stinger. Yeah. And so it's like, what would Asmodeus want? What's what's Asmodeus's connection? What's he get out of the deal? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, he is the. That's the thing about like devils. Like the contracts are really. Do you think really, really like do you think you can have some loopholes in there? And it's Asmodeus, so it's probably has the some best loopholes. Yeah. yeah. Maybe? Okay. 
so Shimeshka has a piece of Diaz's soul, right? And he's mm-hmm. the last um, Kotha, which is mm-hmm. some kind of angel thing. Mm-hmm. And it seems to be a coveted item. And it's yeah. in Sigil, where at least up until now, powers like Asmodeus cannot go in. Yeah. So maybe maybe that's what Asmodeus wants. Yeah. And he knows that Strix can get it for him. Yeah, because I mean, Possible. it's maybe. yeah, because everything that motivates like either devils is like that the, the blood war. All oh, that's what these contracts are for is to get souls to fight in a blood war. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Vixen says the Paulton figure would just be Strahd on the cover of Curse of Strahd. But instead of Strahd, it's Paulton. Eh, yeah, maybe. I don't think... Strahd sort of has a mullet in 5th edition. I don't think... Paulton should have a mullet, but he doesn't have a mullet. But I think he should have a mullet phase at some point. Um, Saima. Paulton's plan was very easy to understand. One. Oh, get number 69. Nine. Two, nice. Profit, yeah. Three. Profit. <laughs> yeah. Why did he want number 12? What was that? Does anybody know what that was all about? Some kind of joke. I know. I didn't get. It's, it's joke. Pretty uh, sure. Look at your buddy. Kids in their numerology. Yeah. <laughs> look at your buddy. Nancy Reagan. Uh, look at your buddy. You <laughs> might get away with the prestidigitation thing in a world where not literally everybody knows magic. It's true. Never trust the lawful. Simon, <laughs> it's important to actually read a devil's contract before signing it. Mm-hmm. True. Um, Phoenix Bee Stinger is a dodgy family too. Mm-hmm. Simon okay. says the twelve is an over Overwatch meme from the High Noon. Ah, uh, I see. High yeah. Noon, one of those whippersnapper video games, mm-hmm. like the Apex Legends. I know nothing about that game. That's a good game, either. Fortnite. Fortnite, which, is, which has the has the dancing in it i know that <laughs> so um here's another plan they had hmm. this seems like a horrible plan strix, mm-hmm. strix disguising herself as manchu yeah that's not no one's gonna react badly to <laughs> i don't that. know that was my favorite plan <laughs> <laughs> i mean it would be funny oh, her yeah. walking around pretending to be manchu because she you know just be funny doing it just like, the last, the last indignity of like Manchun is someone pretending <laughs> to be him. You really want to frame Manchun after all you've done to him already? I mean, you're gonna do that. I mean, he's they, not there they, to they complain. Stripped him, they stripped him in, out in front of Durnan's and took his stuff. And and you know, and then all of his flunkies are there seeing this. It's just bad, bad news. Um, sure would have been fine. It would have been, uh, they, it would I, I, one amusing thing was that the group was given costumes and they go to the auction and like nobody's wearing a costume except that. Costume. And that yeah. reminds me, quick, really quick, I used to work mm-hmm. at a toy store. On Halloween, we were all talking about, oh yeah, we'll all wear costumes. But nobody wore costumes except the new girl who had just started and I felt so bad for the new girl. That's... That's like yeah. when I went to Hascon and me and my dress is Strix and we were like one of the only two people that caught us. I was like, oh no. <laughs> that was the very first Hascon, right? Mm-hmm. It was like hasn't con. Yeah, because we, cause we, <laughs> we still like stayed together because if like it's weird, it's weird when one person says why. If we're like two people, it's at least it's understandable. It feels less weird. Mm-hmm. Nice. Well, it's, it's kind of cool, actually, because you're kind of, I, they, they, they like they did Hascon and then they they kind of suspended doing them after that, right? It's a it's a it, it's a big undertaking. I can understand. Did they not get a lot of attendance? There are a lot of people. There are a, the quite a bit of people there. Yeah. That's weird. Why would they stop? Um, what else we got? Look at Trupa. Pretty much. Oh, geez, okay. Pretty much no video games that came out in the last 10 years run properly on my laptop. Yeah, laptops are no good for... It took me a long time to understand that... I, I couldn't believe this when I learned this, that the fan on the, my laptop was in the bottom. So mm-hmm. you need to put it on a stand, otherwise it's oh, going to overheat. Yeah. It's so basic and like stupid that I just couldn't believe that it was true. But it was true. Yeah. Weird. It was so true. dumb. It's a laptop. It's... Uh... 
So I had to like set it up on books and stuff. It's so stupid. <laughs> Saima, personally, I would have went with disguising as <laughs> as the Xanathar, but to each I mean, their own. Yeah. yeah. Well, Xanathar's dead. That's true. Super dead. So, you know. Disguise, you know, I don't know. Trolling Manshoon just seems like a horrible idea. Although, you know what? They beat up Manshoon once. Yeah. They could do it again. Yeah. Whatever. It's weird that they're strong enough to manhandle some of the bad guys in Dragon Heist, but they are able. To. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I don't. Do you think they? I get. Jarlaxle is tough. They could have taken. I think. I think. I don't think Jarlaxle could have withstood a fight with all of them. Mm. Alone, probably not. Probably not. Like probably I think, not. just like, I think just having Evil in, I think it would be hard to like, That's like a pal, like a pal in. Yeah. He has a high AC. He has a high AC, but gets so, so does Evil, and Evil also has a high AC, so it's kind That's of... true. Um, so, uh, one thing that Chris mentioned was that there was an Iron Slag survivor. Yes. And it's kind of like... Uh, it's sort of like an Iron Slag survivor. I just hmm. watched Band of Brothers. It's about mm -hmm. World War II, and they go, they free yeah. a concentration camp. And the way he Gosh. said that, I'm like, is Iron Slag, like, that's weird, you know? Like, this is weird, you know? An <laughs> Iron Slag survivor, and he's all <laughs> mad at Diat. It's like, dang, uh, you know? But, uh, yeah. Um, also, a Victoro Castle Enter came this close to banishing Paulton, right? And yeah. I was wondering, if he got banished, would he go to Barovia? Would he go to Barovia? Oh, yeah. no. Oh, yeah, that's right. Where he was born, right? Yeah. Fun, and then he's he's in Barovia. Can and it's hard to get back out. He can do it. He's a Vistani. He's a Vistani. Yeah, I mean, that's right. Yeah, he can just. So, come. That's but a weird he, question. But can yeah. he control? I don't know if this was ever answered on the show. Mm -hmm. So okay, he gets in Barovia. He enters the mists and he can leave. But does he control where he comes out? I don't know. Or does he just know. come out somewhere? Hmm. You know? I guess. Mm. I said Vistani are traitors, so they have. I guess maybe they have. They can. They do because they. It would like if you couldn't like control, where you, mm -hmm. your destination would be hard to like maintain that sort of business stuff. I guess so. Maybe they do. Look, at Trupa has vents on the sides of their laptop. That's well, smart. Yeah. That makes sense. Look, at Trupa. Yes. I can vividly remember playing Neverwinter many years ago and getting so angry that my laptop kept overheating. To the point that my friend George thought I was a psycho or something because I sent him a like this ca all caps email, you know, <laughs> angrily telling him that I'm not playing anymore because my laptop keeps overheating. <laughs> the next time I saw him, he was like, Are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> Is everything okay? Uh, Fine. Uh... Look at Troopa. By now, there's probably a new Xanathar. Uh, that'll be mm -hmm. interesting. I bet. Yeah, I wonder how you quickly this like if there's just like See, the whole. That's just a possibility. Wait. But they also blew up the lair, which has been the lair of every Xanathar since the first one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a weird question. Hmm. Can there even be a new Xanathar now? Like, how does that how does that work exactly? I think they no, I don't know actually. It's a good point. I don't know. Hey. Okay, from what I I don't know I don't I don't remember exactly how it works from hmm. both the, all the books and stuff, but I think they dream beholders into existence, right? Mm -hmm. Other beholders dream I them into I think I don't want to spoil things, but I think there's something that is in the Xanathar's layer that blocked that from happening. Yes. But uh I am wondering if maybe somehow Albi might grow into a full fledged beholder. Oh no. Well, uh, mm. that's the thing with the the thing you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It stopped them from becoming like actual beholders, but it created the gazers that the Xanathar uses, like Albi. Mm. So, so if that thing that's in the Xanathar's possible. lair gets destroyed, then Albi might grow. <gasps> that's actually really cool. That's I never cool. thought about that before. So there you go. <laughs> they might be. They might not even know it, and they're hanging out with a future enemy mm. or friend. The first time. Knows. Friend. Knows. I hope that happens. That would be really cool. And we still don't know where Amerigo went. <laughs> yeah, just 
out there. He's in the sewers, right? Somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Last, I mean, last, last, last we heard. Um, Simon says they might very well stand a chance against Jarlaxle, especially if they take out his sneak attack possibilities. Uh, yeah, definitely. He's tough, but there's four of them, and they're level like twelve now. <laughs> Yeah. No, I don't mean to brag, but we were level four and we uh, knocked him unconscious to Sam. Yeah. Yes. A bunch of natural 20s. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We needed those to hit him, so. Lame. I'm not complaining. Look at Trooper. I don't think high ACs cancel each other out. This isn't even. I've seen, I've seen high AC on high AC fights. They will just kind of like ram into each other until like somebody gets like lucky and just kind of like. Yeah. Evangelion yeah. is the show where there's long, long, long awkward pauses, right? That's a lot of shows, but that's the show where like traumatizing robots, terrifying Just robots. Remember, there's a point where he's like in the elevator. Yep. It's like 30 seconds of just <laughs> yep. silence. Uh, Saima. But what if it is? I'm even more curious. Would he have to stay in Barovia since he's native to that plane, not the prime material? Mm. Maybe. If Chris busted out Banish, then I think he must have been ready for the consequences of it. Right? Probably. And I mean, what, what would... So, it's like, it's weird. So, if Paulton got Banished, would he appear in Castle Ravenloft? Would he appear <laughs> near yeah. Eva? Mm. I mean, oh, boy. I guess we would learn of what's been going on in Barovia since the time travel incident. So, yeah. Hmm. Paul, the Paulton did learn a valuable lesson of, like, be careful when charming half-elves and elves. Maybe don't do it. <laughs> I would like it if he got banished through the fourth wall, you know? Oh, no. He's, He's got to watch. He just has to watch. He appeared in Wizards of the Coast the headquarters, yeah. like, near... Next Rutgers, to Chris running DCA. Running game. Yeah. yeah. Or in Paulton's apartment. Or, I mean, yeah. uh, Nate's apartment. You know, or yeah. House. Oh, God. You know, that would be funny. Yeah. Um, Phoenix. Chris would love to go back to Barovia. He seems yeah, to like it. Someday. We will go back, guarantee, at some point again. We will. Simon says there already is a new Xanathar. His name is Captain Death Xanathar. Sneaky mm-hmm. Woodrow. And uh, wait, is Banish different from Banish Mint? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Paulton's apartment now. Yeah, that would be so weird. Paulton is on stream, not Nate. Paulton. That is weird. That would be weird. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, so Zardoz Zord showed up, and he was actually oh. Jarlaxle in disguise. Yep. And he had two dancers with him, and that's right out of the book. Uh, and it's funny. Did uh, there's did art. Thing. They, they may have art they didn't actually fit in the book. So the art on the stream, it's not in the book, but they did mm. make art for Zardoz Zord, which is really It cool. is And I think fantastic. everyone who knows about Zardoz Zord has seen the art, like, online. But yeah. it's not the freaking book. Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. So At least Zardoz, exists Zardoz went into this auction, and he did something to it. He did rude things to ice sculptures. Yeah. It was... Good for him. <laughs> what a... I don't know why he did that. I mean, everyone looks at you when you do that, you know? I mean, he likes attention, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's, you know... He's having fun. That's not the right kind of attention. He's having fun. It is for Jarl Axel. Please leave our establishment kind of attention, you know? not. Oh, Zardoz leaves. Jarl Axel comes in later, so... Ah. He can just do whatever he wants, you know? (laughs) Uh, there's a point where Evelyn was talking to Jarlaxel, and she said that she was doing a bit with Paulton, but as usual, Paulton got bored of it and walked away. Hmm. She's really putting the pressure on Paulton. And Paulton is not... Paulton is not responding. No. No, he's not. No. Just bring in Todd. So just bring in Todd, just Todd. <laughs> it's only Todd now. Bring in Todd, Meloon, Delaxel. If, if I could be a guest star on the show, I would want to be Todd. God. And I would run the most wholesome <laughs> yes. dude. Aww. Todd. And I would go in there and I would get Paulton to I would I would 
As I would like to do that. Get him to freaking give him a little pep talk. Because mm. Todd is such a good guy that He's I think good boy. he would see what was going on and realize. Todd is super evil on the inside. Paul, super, Todd is super evil on the inside. It's like I just, I'm worried about, I'm worried about how wholesome Todd, Todd is. <laughs> yeah, Chris definitely has a pinch, has like a dark streak, so I could definitely see yeah. there being some awful. <laughs> yeah. You just Sue so nice. <laughs> um. Um, Sister Narai Brooks was the guest. He's been on once before. Sister Narai is a member of the Zentrum, and he absolutely hated the plan to frame Manchun. Um, Sister Narai kind of was sort of like the voice of, I don't know, of reason, but definitely like trying to get the group to shape up, you know, or Maybe just, make a better plan. Yeah, make a better plan. Mm -hmm. They never did. Never did. No, they never did. I like Brooks. He's cool. Although, it, yeah, they didn't give, yeah, God, that um, PVP skill check thing was, was great at the end. Like, mm -hmm. just intensely high numbers from, from, from both of the Dex, Dex checks, right? <laughs> Dex yeah, right, right yeah. near the end of cool. the show. Um, I think Narai had it, and Diaz tried to take it from her. And uh, you know what? That is a thing that comes up in D&D a lot, and I mm -hmm. should have paid yep. better attention at that point to see how Chris handled it. Mm -hmm. What was it? I don't even remember what kind of check. It, it was, was opposed, I think. <sighs> dex checks, dex versus opposing sleight of hand, was it? Because mm. oh, they both cool. rolled like high 20s, I think. Like, yeah. Like... Yeah. And um, I think DF won. DF, yeah, won. Mm. Good which, for him. Which is good. Joe Axel. Oh, that's right. He used, he used his, um, his, um, his feet. In that one, oh, what was it, it gave him advantage. Like it gave him advantage on one of the checks. Nice. So I think he didn't roll high enough, and then he rolled the second one. It was high enough, so it's cool seeing his him use that feet. Home movie. <laughs> oh, I've been Very nice. Nice. The chat. Uh, Bixen, all roads lead to Barovia. True, I would bet that the mm -hmm. show will wind up the end. The final episodes will deal with Strahd and Although, Barovia in some way. Or shoot another. with with Evelyn having Sunbeam. Like, mm -hmm. that's not good for vampires mm -hmm. at all. Mm -mm. Dear Lord. I mean, considering what's down in Undermountain, one of those things. If, if that's going to be good. Strahd's going to be their ultimate villain. He needs to beef himself up. Because he... Yeah. They, beat, they really hurt. Beat him up bad. Yeah. At yeah. That party. That was... Phoenix, ta talking about stat versus stat battles. Yes, Death versus the sister. Yeah. That was pretty epic. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. As long as it wasn't strength. Pretty epic. <laughs> Uh, oh boy. Look at you, but considering the ARG they did surrounding Dragon Heist, I can mm -hmm. see Paulton crossing over to Earth. You know? Oh, yeah. That was that um, thing on Twitter, right? With the That was the uh, the pieces. I think it was just like there was a... What's it? There was a character that was like... um, Lore-wise was trapped in... It was Volo. Yeah, Volo, yeah. yeah. He had his mind wiped or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. Earth. Oh. And just had left like yeah, like Yelp things and stuff around. Immortal Fortress is that what it was called? Something like yes. that. Yes. Yep. It's where. Um, Mountain Dew. Look at Trooper in the real ending. Todd seduces Paulton. Ah, what a twist! Mm. What a Maybe. twist! Saima, man, these last few episodes have shown how much chemistry there is between Paulton and Evelyn, and then show how fragile their relationship is at the current moment. Totally true. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's weird. There, it seems like they're reaching a breaking point here. Yeah. Uh, it's like the they yeah they're at a point where it's like they've either got to like do it like kind of like someone's got to kind of like either confess yourself because like the other two have kind of like gone past. They've yeah they've definitely gone past until like the we were forty years into it into the marriage at this point the way those like. <laughs> The Ethan Strix Act. Yeah. Uh, Saima calls Narai and Dieth two ninjas trying to out ninja each other. Ninja. ninja. Mm -hmm. uh, look at you, bro. I come from a land down under mountain. Oh, very mm. nice. Look at you, bro. You're still in the Immortal Fortress Discord? Is there anything in going on in there? Oh, that's weird. Huh. Hmm. It's kind of like the. 
There must be the internet must be littered with these mm. relics of past gimmicks. The Discord. Like I, I remember yeah. reading. I don't know if it's still up, but the Space Jam website from the nineties yes. was, was still online. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if it's no still one... now, but it was for a very, very long time. The bandwidth must have just been microscopic, considering what the graphics and like, not, like. Pretty sure. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to alarm anybody, but I'm pretty sure there's a Space Jam two coming out. Oh, LeBron James is in it, I believe. So, all those people who really like that bunny lady from it. Oh, Lola Bunny. Keep mm-hmm. your fingers crossed. They haven't released <laughs> the cast list yet. Oh boy. <laughs> um. Oh, Charles Axel, what a scoundrel! Mm. He's so he. I believe he is claiming that. If he gets the 500,000 gold, he's going to donate half of it to the charity of Evelyn's Choice. Yeah. What? The... It's, I mean, it, you know that. what? It, I mean, he could do that just because it, it serves it serves his purpose to gain influence in, in Waterdeep. Waterdeep, true. I mean, get some good will going. That's for true. Lothan, more so for Lothan. So, I mean, that just could be, it, it and, benefits him, but like, he'll say it's for, it's for Evelyn. For Evelyn, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, if you get goodwill with Waterdeep, and with Evelyn at the same time, it's like yeah, this is win-win for. So, I mean, it's not necessarily the really money good. for Joel Axel. It seems like it's the influence that the money can get you. Oh yeah. Um, so Istrid Horn bids one hundred twenty-five thousand gold, and the That's lights cool. go out, mm-hmm. and a whole bunch of spells go off, and I assume one of the castle lanterns summoned that devil. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. I w- I wouldn't be surprised if it was already with them. And it was just yeah, like, it was disguised or like him. yeah. Oh, yeah. that would be funny. In a costume to hide the spikes, <laughs> and somebody bumps into it. And that'd be yeah. Funny. Um, Jarlax. All right, so um, this whole thing was run by Anvar, who is um, Lady Rajnar's aide, I guess. Mm-hmm. And during mm-hmm. when it got dark, that's who Jarlaxle stabbed. He stabbed yep. Anvar. Yeah. Just kind of like. What are you stabbing him for? So, you know what I mean? I don't get that. I mean, there was the whole thing that Joe Axel's agents were chasing Lady Rajnar, so maybe there's there's something more than just the stone. Yeah, going maybe on there's there. something. Yeah, something maybe deeper with that. Oh God, My maybe God. they had a thing. Oh, for oh, in Jar Axel. Oh no, oh, I never thought about that. My theory on this was. That this auction was a way just to get all the people who want the stone in one place, while lady and so like auctioning a fake stone, while Rajner has the real one in his go, in the vault of dragons right now. You know, possible. Hoping mm. everybody will just kill each other while she goes in there and gets the actual fortune. That that is something I noticed. Like the, the amount of gold that the stone was going for was like nothing mm-hmm. compared to what you would get in the vault. Yeah. You know, so why would she want to sell the stone for like ten thousand gold? You know. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think. Very strange. Yeah, I think this whole auction was some kind of trap or trick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just to get them all, but they all fell for it. <laughs> yes, they did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and then they all started murdering each other. So. Yeah. I yep. guess we'll we'll know if like Vivid Vivka is the guest on an episode or two from now. Yeah, yeah. Although that's the deal. Although I would imagine mm-hmm. she's going to appear no matter what because she's involved with this whole thing. So probably. Um, and then uh, at the very end of the episode, Jarlaxle demanded that Diath hand the stone over. Mm-hmm. Don't hand it over. You guys can take him. <laughs> although, <laughs> although Jarlaxle. this is public embar- embarrassment of Jarlaxle, though, in front of like influential people. So you know. Well, I think it's Evelyn not... steps up and says, hey, Jarlaxle, we're friends, you know. Then he's going to be in a weird spot. We are friends, so give me the stone. Mm-hmm. It's going to be like a <laughs> thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Look, mm-hmm. Troopa says, Lola, really? Lola Bunny is yeah. vanilla nowadays? Oh, all right. <laughs> when you have people drawing airplanes. It's been, tw- been weird. It's been yeah. 20 people are drawing airplanes, years. what? What do you mean? Uh, no you, you know the rest of this. <laughs> they are not doing that. I do not believe. Yes, that. they are. You can look it up after the show, Sean. 
I know that there's a Bowser one, a lady yeah, Bowser. Oh. What's that called? Yeah, Bowser. That's also, yeah. yeah. That's also vanilla. Yeah, that's pretty vanilla too. It's not. It's not the air. It's not an airplane. <laughs> I'm googling that right when we get off. I've seen the moon land too. It's some weird stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna Google airplane and just see what it comes up. <laughs> uh, Phoenix says no marmite forever. Mm. I Vixen, I feel like Paulton and Evelyn are always fine as friends, but when Evelyn tries to push a relationship, Paulton seems to distance himself. Mm. True. Well, he still does have the dead wife. Yeah. It's probably. He's not really. Yeah. He's got a dead wife that he refuses to think about. So. Mm -hmm. He probably doesn't want another one. (laughs) (laughs) Saima. Too bad the dwarves aren't going to be happy with Diath if some random charity gets... That's a, that's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> Man, screw those dwarves. I mean, they're, they're not going to be... I have a feeling they're not going to be happy even with the money that it's that true. they got. The dwarves are survivors. Okay. Saima. <laughs> I mean, Lady Castellanter went out the room right before it happened. True. Maybe sure. Gerald Axel thought the auctioneer still had the stone. Mm-hmm. True. Maybe. True. A lot of good points here. Saima. Especially since Lady Rajnar was already collecting the keys to the dragon's vault. Mm-hmm. It's strange to sell the main key after going through all that effort. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes, indeedly. Phoenix. But the stone spoke, so isn't it the real thing? It did speak? Oh. Wait a minute. The stone just tells mm-hmm. you where the vault is. Yes. So yeah. if yeah. she had the stone and it yeah. told her where the vault is, she doesn't need it anymore. So she's yeah, tell, not only is, is she going into the vault to get the five hundred thousand, she's also selling the stone for an additional yeah. hundred and twenty five thousand. Like it, it um it magically kind of wipes your memory, but doesn't mean that there's any other way other ways of when you're tuned to it to get that information. Okay. I she guess. could just write it down, right? That's true too, actually, yeah. <laughs> but there's, I mean there's there's magical ways are probably around that thing. That's yeah. hmm. um Vixen. Does Jarlaxle recognize Diath? I thought oh. Diath was still wearing the costume. Jarlaxle. Well, I feel like their costumes were pretty weak, so. Jarlaxle is also a master of disguise, so just recognize Diath. And... Real Rest recognizes me. real. That's what I think. That's what I say on the streets. Um, yeah. Look you at say Trupa. it all the time, Sean. Yeah. Heck yeah, when I'm going to 7-Eleven. Look at your butt. <laughs> I was once in a group where someone played one of those airplanes. Get out of here with the airplane. What? This is not a real thing. Trolling, unfortunately. trolling me. Saima, attuned to me. You forgot. You forget everything the stone told you after you left it. Okay. Yeah. So, there's ways. I mean, there's. It's magic. There's probably ways. Yeah, there's definitely probably ways around that. Oh, look at that time, boys. It was perfect. Perfectly timed. It's like a amazing how that worked out. Dylan knows what's up <laughs> with, the, with the airplane. I don't think you should. I don't, <laughs> I don't know where. I don't know would, if that's a good thing. And where you would learn about this. Internet. Where you would go to find an airplane. Anyway, Saima. Third no, <laughs> no, everybody's costume was weak except yet. But process of elimination is a powerful tool. Hmm. That's true. If you heard Diaz talk. You probably yeah, the other isn't. Together. That's true. Yeah. All right. Well, we have had ourselves another successful waffle talk. I'd like to thank Shauna and Dylan for waffle talking with us, and I want to thank everybody in the chat. Many of you may notice you are VIPs. Uh, Vixen, my friend, you are going to be a VIP. I think I I think I tried to VIP you. But I got someone with a slightly different spelling who is a VIP, so I'm gonna I'm gonna VIP you like as soon as we're done with it. So um, thank you everybody for watching this, and uh, why don't we do some plugs? Uh, Shauna, do you have any plugs? Yeah, it's um Shauna. I'm, I mean, I'm flying stairs on Twitter. Um, so as far as games, um, Saturdays at 6:30 p.m. is Hell's Rebels, which is a path Pathfinder conversion of a into a 5e campaign where a bunch of nobles and try to um, start a revolution in an infernal controlled city. And on 
on Mondays at 8.30, it's Castle, it, on um, Greyhawk Channel. It's um, against the giant Liberation and Joff, which is uh, basically a small special forces army tries to take kill as many giants as possible. And we have done that. It's a lot of giants. It sounds like a pretty giant task that you're... <laughs> Dylan, do you have any plugs? Well, Sean, yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah Saturday here on Tower Score RPG. Where else? Ooh, hope At hope. 3 p.m. Eastern time, we're going to be starting Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Mm. <laughs> After our epic 20th episode finale of Dragon Heist, where we got the gold. You know, explosive so, episode. Yeah, explosive. Yes, very. Um, so yeah, uh, come watch that. It should be fun. We have two new characters joining us mm. on our adventures. Well, probably just one for the first episode. So. Okay, that works. Shoot. All right. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So yeah, this weekend I'll be running some games. 3 p.m. Mm-hmm. Eastern on Saturday, I'll be doing uh, Mad Mage. At 6:30, I'll be doing Hell's Rebels, and then Sunday. At 6.30 p.m. Eastern, I'll be doing Dungeon Academy. Uh, one of the players actually just became a Dark Lord of her own Domain of Dread. So the group <laughs> is split in Barovia right now, so it's yeah. crazy stuff going on. So, uh, yeah, and then don't forget to watch uh, Dice Camera. I think PAX East is coming up soon. End of the month. End of the Not month. Definitely. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have another one of those live shows to talk about. All sorts of good stuff going on, so... Yep. Thank you, everybody, very, very much for uh, watching, and thank you especially to everybody in the chat. I really appreciate it, and your comments make the show a bajillion times better, and I really uh, am thankful that you do it. So we'll see you all next week. Uh, Goodbye.